going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. If you're anything like me, then one of your goals is to grow as much food as possible. But how can we get the most out of the garden space that we have? That's what I want to share with you today. Let's go. When it comes to producing your own food, it's not just how much land you have that'll determine how much you can grow. Rather, it's also the way you approach that space. One of my favorite techniques for getting the most out of the garden area that I have is using the square foot gardening method. Here's the book right here by Mel Bartholomew, a great book I suggest reading. I'll leave a link in the description for you. But the square foot gardening, it's pretty self-explanatory. What we're gonna do is break each section into one square foot and approach it like that. One of the reasons I love this method so much is because it really simplifies things for new gardeners. It also adds a lot of value for experienced gardeners too. But the reason it simplifies things so much is because it's like when you go after a problem. When you go for a problem, instead of trying to solve the whole thing at once, it's much easier to just break it down into smaller fragmented pieces. So when it comes to planting a new garden, it could be really overwhelming. Uh, to decide where you're gonna plant things and the spacing, but this approach makes it very simple. It's like uh, that old saying goes, anyone could take something simple and make it confusing. But when you could take something confusing and really simplify it, I think that adds a lot of value. And that's one of the reasons I think this method is just, it's a great one. If you've been following the channel for a little while, then this section, it looks a little different than it did in the past. Recently, I put these beds in here, and the reason I put these beds in was to make the perfect frame size for doing this square foot gardening. So these beds are exactly 10 feet long and four feet wide, giving me 40 squares. Then I knocked some stakes in and then screwed the boards to the stakes so that the bed doesn't shift or anything. One thing I want you to notice though is after I did that, I dumped compost over top of my ground and I didn't mix it in, I just dumped compost over top. You'll see though this compost, it, it like clumps up and it dries out and it cracks on top of the ground like this. This isn't what I want if I want to direct sow stuff into, into here because it'll be tough for the seeds to pop through this. So this compost is great as it is here, but I need something over top of it. You'll notice on this other bed here, what I did was I put some happy frog soil, just a very thin layer of happy frog soil over top of this. And you can see how it's not cracking. This is just going to create a perfect environment for me to sow seeds indirectly or transplant right into. Now I'm just watering this section down. I don't want it really dry before I put the happy frog soil over top of it. Now I'm just gonna take this bag of happy frog soil, open it up. I specifically use the happy frog. It's my favorite soil that I've ever used. It's got a lot of strains of the mycorrhizal fungi in there. Something that I absolutely love. The, consist the consistency is always good and I've been happy with the results. So what I'm gonna do is just spread this bag along the top. So what I'm doing is just making sure I get a pretty level everywhere and that I have it all covered. When making these raised beds, you really need to make sure that they're level or frame, whatever it is. Both these are level with one another. This way when I water it, it's gonna water everything evenly. It's not gonna go downhill anyway. Now what I'm gonna do is just take a board, a flat board, and just make sure that the soil isn't too high. And I'm gonna show you why there's a particular reason I don't want the soil to be higher than the sides. I'll show you it in just a minute. What I'm gonna do is just take this board and make sure nothing's high. If it is, this'll drag it down. As you can see, some here is a little high. A little low is okay, but we don't want it high. And the rest of it looks good. Okay, now we got the frame all ready. What we're gonna do is just start building our grid system to make our one by one squares. And the way we're gonna do that is just go through, measure a foot and mark it. Before I do that though, I wanna make sure that you guys realize when you're building these boxes, you have to make sure that the inside is four foot or three foot or however many feet. Don't measure from the outside because that's gonna screw up your boxes on the inside. Again, we're gonna make sure we measure from the inside and then we're gonna mark every foot. We're gonna make sure we do the same thing on all four sides. It looks like Tuck found his own little spot there. A lot of you have been asking about Tuck. He's had a great winter. And as you can see, he's back to his old ways. Digging some holes in the garden, get, staying nice and cool, enjoying the day. And this guy, is uh, his birthday is actually coming up. This little guy's birthday is coming up. He's gonna be 10 years old. So throw some hearts down in the comments for Tuck if you're excited to see him this year, what he's gonna be digging, what he's gonna be eating. He's just chilling out right now, hanging out while we're gardening. And uh, maybe we'll grab a carrot a little while for him, see if he wants a little snack. The frame is all measured and marked. What I'm gonna do is make this grid using string. 
So the way I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna pre-drill, then I'm gonna wrap a string around a screw and then drill that right in so it's all flush. The way I'm gonna make it flush is I'm gonna be using a countersink bit. I'll put a link in the description for just what this is. So I'm gonna find my mark and pre-drill first. Make sure you're pre-drilling. If you don't pre-drill, you're gonna split this wood. So I wanna kinda center it, center it as best I can. Pre-drill. And that countersink is just gonna make it so the screw can sit flat. We're gonna go around and pre-drill all the marks. There we go, last one, all finished, screwed. Next, what I'm gonna do, take my screws, inch and five eight screws, decking screws. We wanna make sure that they're not gonna rust or anything. I'm just gonna put it in just a little bit, get it started. Then I'm gonna take my string and just wrap it around. I don't even have to tie it because I'm gonna sink it in. Then we'll just sink the screw right in like that. Go to the other side and do the same thing. Get started, just wrap it. A little tight, but the screw is gonna pull it as it's spinning, so I don't wanna do it too tight. As you can see, it's all flush there, so it's gonna shed water nicely too. We're gonna do the same thing for the rest till we have all square foot boxes. Take this last string, wrap it around, sink it in. It's the final one. Just cut it. We'll take a step back now and you can see how we've got our all 40 one foot sections. It looks fantastic. And now I think you can start to get an idea of why this is a simplified approach. Instead of thinking, what am I gonna plant in this whole entire bed? Now we'll go one square at a time. What am I gonna plant in this square? And then that one. So let's grab some plants and get them in the ground. You can see my little nursery section here. I've got a bunch of stuff started. And the first square, the first four rows of squares, what I'm actually gonna do is put spinach in. So let's grab some spinach plants. And most plants, uh, spinach, brassicas, and those, they're good to be transplanted once they start showing their first two true leaves. These are just the seed casing leaves. Here's the true leaves. This one's ready to transplant. Let's put a couple of these out. We've got some Bloomsdale spinach, some Tetan spinach, and a few others. For our first square foot box, we're gonna plant some spinach. And the book says we can fit nine spinach in just this one square foot. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, basically just like that. You can see in most of my little cells, I have two growing. For instance, this one here. What I'll do is just keep the good one and cut out the bad one. Just gives me more of a selection. So let's start to get this first corner one in. These uh, plants can be tough to get out of these little cells. I found and it's tough, you can't just kind of flip it over. Whenever you're transplanting, you never want to pull the plants up from the base like this. Never, never do that. You want to flip it over and, and have it come into your hand. Loosen up the soil a little bit. But since I can't do that, these are all separate, what I like to do is just take these plant labels, slide one on each side, all the way down, and just lightly pull up, which is very minimal compression. And see that long tap root? We want that. Spinach have a long tap root, so we want to make sure we get that in there. That's one of the reasons spinach typically don't really like being transplanted that much but they can still manage. So we'll get this spinach in, cinnamon really gently. And you can see how nice this happy frog soil is and how much of an advantage it could give you. One in, we're gonna keep doing the same thing. Again, nine in this one square foot box. Good looking root system. Make sure it's pretty deep in there. And then we always want to tuck it in. We don't want air space, so you want to push it in. You don't want to force it down, but you want to put a little pressure down so there's no air space. After, we'll water everything in too. That'll fill up any gaps of air space as well. There we go, spinach all planted, watered, looking great. By the end of it, there's gonna be nine per square foot. I'm gonna plant more spinach in the other rows, but first, let's get onto this next box right here and plant some carrots. When it comes to planting carrots in the square foot guarding method, they say about 16 per square. So I've got a little carrot planting method I'm gonna go with here. So I'm gonna make a divot, four of them, two, three, four rows, just like this, little burrows. And then we're gonna plant the carrots into here, and then we're essentially gonna thin out to four a row. What we're gonna be left with is 16 carrots. So these just little furrows. The reason I wanna 
these furrows is because I'm going to put the carrots into these furrows and then cover them a little bit and then this way every time I water I know that the uh, that the water is going into these furrows because carrots need a good consistent moisture in, in order to pop so you want to have really really consistent moisture with carrots in order to germinate that's why we want to put these furrows in just like this the first variety we're going to plant is Napoli carrots and again we have these little furrows here they seem deep but I'm not going to push the soil all the way over let's get some carrots Again, four a row, so we don't want to overplant too many. Maybe about 10 or 12 in each, space them pretty well. So we'll get all these carrots in. There's also the board method of planting carrots, which I showed. This is just a little different. Still all about getting better germination. Put the rest of these carrots back in. Another thing about this square foot guarding method is it's going to save you a lot of seeds because you're gonna make sure you get the most use out of each one. Now some of that excess soil that I pushed off to the side, I'm just gonna lightly go over the top. Just cover it really lightly. Nice dusting. Get a little more off from the side here. Now we're going to water it in and we'll keep those furrows. There we go. Now you can see every time we water, we're going to make sure it stays in those furrows. Great germination. That box is done. We're going to move on to another box. The spinach is in. The carrots are in. It's looking fantastic. I only have a couple squares planted though. I'm going to plant some more. As you can see, we've got some beautiful kale here, some cabbage some beets. When it comes to things like kale, cabbage, cauliflower, we can only plant one per square, but beets, we can plant eight. Obviously, I have a lot more squares to plant, so I'm going to get at it. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some value in it. I hope you get outside and get your own square foot garden going. I really think it could help your production. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. I just wanted to thank everybody for your continual support, even throughout the winter. Me and Tuck went into a little bit of hibernation. We had our break, we did our reading, and we're ready. Spring's here. It's going to be nonstop. Tuck James Brizioni, back to you real soon. We out.